we can integrate any rational function as long as we can factorize its denominator. We use a partial fraction decomposition to do so. But how does this work in practice? Let us take a look at a slightly more complicated example in this video. So here we have our f of x, which is a bit more complicated. And we want to find the antiderivative, and we have already factorized the denominator. We need to be able to do so, otherwise we are lost. Now we want to uh, decompose this fraction as something divided by x squared plus 1 plus something else divided by x plus 2. Uh, so the something else is just a c divided by x plus 2. Now we have an uh, x squared plus 1 over here for the first term, which is uh, uh, you, you, you cannot write as x plus a times x plus b, so you, uh, it's irreducible uh, uh, now, it has complex uh, roots. So you are stuck with x squared plus 1, so what do we have to put in the numerator? Well, a polynomial of one degree lower, so in this case that would be an ax plus b. So we want to rewrite our big fraction as ax plus b over x squared plus 1 plus c over x plus 2. So that will be our goal. And then we, of course, have to try to integrate those two terms with which we are left. So how do we do this? Again, we have to make sure that the, uh, we can add them so the denominators have to be the same. So we multiply with 1 and we multiply with 1 in order to make sure the denominators uh, become the same. So now we have the same denominators. Uh, and then we work out the brackets. Uh, so the, uh, uh, here we have the first term, here we have the second term. Uh, what do we have? An ax squared plus 2ax plus a bx plus 2b. So those are those four terms. Plus cx squared plus c are those two terms. And then we have to compare again. Uh, what do we have with uh, x squared on the left and the right? Again, we have every uh, equality signs everywhere. We have a 4 times x squared over here. And so 4 equals an a plus c. So that's our first equation. Then with x's we have a 1. So 1 equals, what do we have with x? 2a plus b. So 1 equals 2a plus b. And constant term here, 1. Again, what constant term? So we have over here, so this 1 equals a 2b plus c. So there we go. So you see we are left with three linear equations in a, b, and c with three, uh, so three unknowns and three uh, equations. So we can uh, use our linear algebra to uh, solve these equations. We form the augmented matrix. Uh, first row, 1 times a plus 0 times b plus 1 times c equals 4. Second row, 2 times a plus 1 times b equals 1. And third row, 0 times a plus 2 times b plus 1 times c equals 1. Then we use the row reduction, minus 2 over here. Uh, first and last row remain the same, and the second row becomes 0, 1, minus 2, minus 7. And then uh, we get rid of this 2 by subtracting 2 again. So first and second row now remain the same over here. And for the third row we get 0, 0, subtract 2 times, so subtract minus 4, so add 4, we get a 5. Subtract minus 14, so add 14 gives us a 15. Then we can get rid of some rubbish by dividing by 5. We go over here. And then finally, we add this twice here. And we subtract once here uh, to get our final augmented matrix. And we can read off the solution. A equals 1, B equals minus 1, and C equals 3. So now we have separated our fraction. We have rewritten our f of x as uh, a, uh, ax plus b, so that becomes x minus 1, uh, plus c of x plus 2. So there we go. Uh, now we've done the hard work, and ideally we can now integrate the final terms. So we have to be a bit uh, careful with the uh, x minus 1. Uh, the x minus 1 equals 2x times 1 half divided by x squared plus 1, because now we can integrate this part easily. Minus 1 times the 1 over x squared plus 1, plus 3 times 1 over x plus 2. Bit careful with the 
uh, first term, we use the substitution rule, use u equals x squared plus 1 gives you uh, du equals 2x dx, which is exactly in the uh, numerator, gives us a 1 over u du, gives us the ln of u plus some integration constant. And now we have all three terms. We have uh, one half, this one half, times the ln of u, which is x squared plus 1. The 1 over x squared plus 1 gives us an r tangent of x with the additional minus sign. And the 1 over x plus 2 gives us the ln of x plus 2 times a factor of 3, which was there, plus some integration constant. So there you have your antiderivative.